305. This is an explosive outbreak that's involved everybody on the planet. These infectious disease pathogens wreak havoc on humanity silently. We needed to have a vaccine if we were going to triumph over this threat. Every day they went into the lab, they could be potentially helping society get out of this disaster. It may be the most important scientific achievement of our time. A vaccine truly developed at warp speed to stem the tide of a pandemic that has spread to more than 170 countries and killed more than 2 million people around the world. What are we learning from Pfizer this morning? This is incredible data, I have to say. Anytime you're ready. January 10th, 2020. Professor Zhang Yongzhen a distinguished infectious disease scientist in China, collects a sample of the new virus and sequences the genome in a marathon 48-hour session. He shares it with his colleague, Professor Eddie Holmes, before boarding a plane. Within minutes, Professor Zhang's phone rings. I called Dr. Zhang to say, can I release this data? Professor Eddie Holmes is an evolutionary biologist and virologist at the University of Sydney. He knows just how important this genome sequence is to the scientific community, because few, if any, scientists have been able to obtain a sample of the new pathogen. He was strapped into his seat ready for takeoff. He said, I'll call you back. So he called me back around a minute later. He said, OK, let's release it. In what will later be known as the tweet that saved the world. Within minutes, there was immediate um, reaction. That really was the point at which you could say uh, the start button was pressed for what is now leading to vaccines that are going to save potentially hundreds of thousands or millions of lives. There's two things that one looks for in a new pathogen that would be concerning. How easily it spreads from one person to another and does it cause severe disease? And this virus does both and unfortunately very well. Dr. Fauci and his team are singularly focused on the deadly pathogen. Since 2017, the NIH has been working with the up-and-coming biotech company Moderna on developing vaccines quickly. The company is built on the premise that its new vaccine technology, known as mRNA, can be developed to combat new diseases in record time. mRNA stands for messenger ribonucleic acid. It's a set of instructions that tells your DNA what to do. When a coronavirus mRNA vaccine is injected into your body, it instructs your DNA to create a harmless version of the coronavirus's spike protein. Your immune system still recognizes this powerless spike protein as an invader and begins producing antibodies, Y-shaped proteins that bind like a lock and key to the intruder and kill it. Now your immune system is trained and if you get infected with the real coronavirus, your body recognizes the signature spike protein and knows how to defeat it. The mRNA vaccine platform offers uh, not just safety, but it also you're able to manufacture it large scale very, very fast. But mRNA vaccines are fragile and must be stored in sub-zero temperatures, or they run the risk of quickly degrading and becoming useless. January 31st, 2020. I have today declared that the coronavirus presents a public health emergency in the United States. By the end of January, it became clear that this was going to become a global pandemic. I mean, to people who were paying attention. What should we do? That conversation got more and more heated as time went on. Dr. Gregory Glenn, president of research and development at biotech company Novavax, gets to work on a coronavirus vaccine at the company's headquarters in Maryland. Dr. Patel's team at Novavax is working on a protein-based vaccine, which injects a man-made version of the coronavirus spike protein directly into the body. The spike protein has been rendered harmless in the lab, but even as a benign invader, your immune system builds antibodies to fight it. Your body is now trained to recognize and attack the real coronavirus spike protein in the future. A virus particle looks like a virus to the immune system, it, and so you get a very, very robust response to that. Like mRNA vaccines, protein-based vaccines can be designed quickly. But unlike mRNA, they do not have to be stored in sub-freezing temperatures. 
NIH director, Dr. Francis Collins, sees a fundamental problem with the vaccine effort. I looked across what was happening as far as research on vaccines, and there was a lot of activity, but it was scattershot. It was not coordinated. And so on April 4th, I convened a group of chief scientists of nine pharmaceutical companies, the FDA, the CDC, the Department of Defense, and multiple NIH institutes, and said, guys, this is not the way we're going to win this war. We're going to have to come up with a strategy that coordinates this effort, prioritizes, builds clinical trials in record time, writes master protocols uh, so that these trials can be conducted quickly. If we don't do that, we have ourselves to blame. Within just two weeks, the partnership is formed. It's called ACTIVE, Accelerating COVID-19 Therapeutic Interventions and Vaccines. We've never done anything like this on this scale and this timetable, not worrying about who is going to get the credit, just get it done. We would not be where we are without that. May 15th, 2020. The U.S. makes a dramatic announcement. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. What we wanted to do with Operation Warp Speed was not to have one winner, but to have all winners. And I think people have a misinterpretation that there's a race to the finish line and there'll be a winner and everyone else will be a loser. No, we need all of the vaccine. 